In the last video, we laid out this octagon and I put plates on it and I want to build a 12-12 pitch roof on it. So there's eight sides and uh, there's eight hips and eight common rafters. And the span of this one is 36 inches. And that is the common rafter span. Common rafter emanates from the plate lines at 90 degrees in plan view. So that's the first ones we're going to cut. Now, I want to step them off with the steel square. It's an old fashioned method, pre-calculator. Uh, it's like a slide rule. It's almost like a magical tool in the old days for carpenters. If you knew how to use this, you, you excelled above the rest, you know. Nowadays, people only use it for stairs, pretty much just as a marking gauge, you know. Some people even cut out a piece of plywood and use it instead of one of these. As, and I get it, but this right here, is a, is a wonderful tool to know how to use and it enable you to use your handheld computer uh, in more effectively. So let's just start right away. Um, one thing is the parts of this square are, this is the body of the square, this is the tongue of the square, and all the marks that I make on the rafter along the body of this square, when I cut the rafter and stand it in place, you can put a level on them and they'll be dead level. Same with the with the tongue of the square, you put um, all the marks I made on the rafter, you put a level on it, it will be dead plumb. So you have to imagine that in real time, this, although I'm marking on the bench, this always stays level. And because of it, I like to mark from, I like the, the heel of the square to be towards my abdomen. So I'm looking at a level line like this. That to me is, is intuitive. Now there are the guys in the old days that flip it around, and mark from left to right with, with the heel of the square away from them. And I never like that, I don't like that. And I, they just want to mark from left to right like we read. This is from right to left and there's a reason for it. If you flip it around and you had the heel of the square towards your abdomen and you try to mark from left to right, you'd find that it would be difficult to do so because there's twelfths and tenths on this side. And there's a method for using 12 and tenths to step off rafters that is amazing. It's a great thing. So we're going to do it more, more standard method, most commonly used method, eighth and sixteenths of an inch. And so the first thing you do, and, and there'll be no flipping the square, they'll only be spinning the square. That's, that's something you should remember. If you find yourself flipping the square, it's wrong. You're only spinning. So at this point here, I am going to, the, the, this would be like this towards... Like I said, the body's level. I want to spin the square so that the outside of the building, which is a plumb line, I can do with the tongue without uh, running out of wood here. Now, there's a way that people dealt with that in the old days. They would make one of these, which is essentially a piece of two by, or no, it's one by. In this case, it's redwood because it's left out in the rain with a kerf in it, and you slide the square in between there and tighten these thumb screws and you can slide almost entirely off the edge of the board and mark it, it works great. But anyway, if you spin it around the opposite way, you draw the first line, which is the plate line, that's where we're starting. Starting with the plate line, working our way up towards the ridge. So I draw the line, then I spin the rafter, uh, uh, the square around, once, once again, and slip it, down, slip it back down in there and make a mark right where the, the stair gauge hits the outside of the building, and make a level line. And on the tongue, make a plumb line. And then you slide it forward. That's one full step of 12 inches. Hence, 12 inches on the level. Now we need one more partial step. If this is 15 foot six, then I would do 15 full steps and one partial step. This is only one foot six, so it's one full step and one partial step of six inches. Because the run of this building is one foot six. So I slide it, slide it forward six more inches. Now, this board is so narrow, it doesn't actually make it down to the bottom of the square, so I don't really know where six inches is. So they have uh, tools that you can use to transfer six inches up onto the board, or the tongue of the square is an inch and a half, and if you use the top of the body of the square, if you add four and a half inches, that's six inches, make a mark there you know, or basically line that up with your full, first full mark and then make a new mark at the, on the tongue of the square and that'll be cut out and nailed to the ridge, that final mark right there. 
So that's it, and that's, that's all it takes. Now, I have to get, create a seat cut down here, and I want the seat cut to be an inch and a half. So, seat cut is the level cut of the bird's mouth. The heel cut is the part that goes down behind the plate, down along the outside of the building. The rafter tail shoots off the building, and there's what's called the heel stand. Now, this is the heel of the square, remember? Heel cut and heel stand added together create the plum cut. The heel stand is from the top of the plate up to the top of the rafter, and it's up to you what, what it is. Sometimes the architect calls it out, sometimes they don't. In this case, it's going to be, since most, uh, most roof framers know that the 45 degree angle, which is what this is, 12, 12 pitch, of a three and a half inch two, um, piece of wood is five inches. I'm going to go ahead and have an inch and a half heel a seat cut, an inch and a half heel cut. So my heel stand is going to be with the remainder, which is three and a half inches. And I've marked it out already and ran the rest while for the overhang that we can cut later. Now, I'd write on this template or pattern, cut this out and use it to cut out the mark out the other seven rafters instead of stepping each one. That would be a waste of time. And even back in the old days, the journeymen, and I found these pattern rafters in the roofs. We tore them apart, these old roofs from the 20s and the teens. And it said pattern. And I said, this is the one that the journeymen cut and they gave to the apprentices and to mark them all out and cut them with a handsaw by hand in the 20s because there was no, no, no circular saws all on jobs. So there wasn't any calculators. There wasn't any circular saws. So this is really good to know. This is really important. It took me a few, a few seconds to do this probably take longer to, to punch it into the calculator, make a plum cut, pull from the plum cut, make a mark. Maybe not, but you see how fast it was. Now, if it was a long rafter, it would take longer, but you know it's right. So, like I said, I use this to mark seven, seven more and I'll have eight common rafters. The next video will be these octagon hip rafters.